Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Scenes with Ben. And I am with the man here, the founder of Performance Medicine, uh, Dr. Tom Rogers. Uh, Dr. Rogers, how's it going? Good, Ben. How are you? Welcome to Behind the Scenes. This is your first appearance on Behind the Scenes. Yeah, I like being behind the scenes. I've always been a behind the scenes guy, so thank you for we're going, me. We're going behind the scenes today because... As everyone can see, if you're if you're watching uh, this video on YouTube or Facebook, um, we have our, our shirts on, and these shirts say, "Have you checked your hormones? We can help." And and what I wanted to go behind the scenes on today is how do how did these shirts come about? How did this phrase come about? Because uh, I know that hormones is at the uh, the forefront of of everything that you do at Performance Medicine. So. Kind of give us the story uh, and your thoughts on these shirts. First of all, thank you for this cup you gave me, too, this coffee cup. I'm drinking some Bulletproof coffee. It is the afternoon, not the morning. Black coffee in the morning, Bulletproof early afternoon if needed. But this shows our three offices, our cool offices at Performance Medicine. Um, as far as the shirts go, um, what do you want me to talk about the shirts? So, or? so like, we, we, we had a meeting, and, and I, I don't know if I'm, not, I'm just going to cue you in here. We had a meeting with Brad Blackwell, and we were we were trying to come up with with some messaging that would really um, that would really um, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? It would uh, it would reach a certain audience, and and we came up with "Have you checked your hormones?" and it seems so simple, um, but but tell us like what does that mean to you? Have you checked your hormones? Uh, yes, I have checked my hormones, but. Um yeah, Brad is a great friend, and he's now our CFO. And um, I'm trying to—he's also a great musician. I'm trying to get him to write a little ditty to our introduction to our podcast. So on his guitar. So along with Jenny, he's gonna—he's gonna do some of that, and hopefully within a week we'll have that for you. I actually can't a, wait for that. A cool song. But um, what does that mean to me as far as have your hormones checked? Well, that performance medicine—you know, my basic. Um, I won't say gift, but my interest in health really boils down to two things that I really zero in on, and we have a niche that we've been doing for years, and of course, one is hormones, the other one's nutrition, and our whole idea behind performance medicine was um, to kind of break away from the pack, um, you know, from primary care medicine that it seems to be more reactionary, you know, you've got this disease, here's the medicine I'm going to try to treat you with. Instead of, why do you have that disease in the first place, and what can I do to prevent it? So I've kind of niched along towards a preventive medicine type approach and getting people to eat better and exercise more, sleep better, keep stress down, take the right vitamins. Um, and as you get older, like me, 65 years old, you got to start thinking. I mean, your hormones get depleted. And, of course, with a male, you're talking about testosterone. With a female, a little more complex, you're talking about different types of estrogens, progesterones, testosterone also, DHEA. But So those are the male and female hormones. But there's other hormones, too, like thyroid, which is very misunderstood, adrenals, cortisol, Vitamin D is a hormone. Um, so there's a lot of different things we like to look look at and find out why you're overweight. You can't seem to lose weight. Um, you feel tired all the time. You have some autoimmune issues um, like Hashimoto's thyroiditis. You have gut problems. Um, so, And you have gut hormones that talk too like uh, leptin and ghrelin and you know, that determine how satisfied you are, how hungry you are. So, I mean, your hormones are like a, a symphony. You have to conduct a symphony. And if one of them's off, the other ones are probably not going to work as well or be off as well. So, and there's a lot of misunderstanding about hormones. Um, you know, a lot of people like will say, well, I'm afraid of hormones. I'm a female and I, I may get breast cancer. Well, you know, that's, that's just total bunk, really. Um, really, when your hormones decline, you decline in every way. It's like nature saying to you, you're finished reproducing, start dying. So you get brittle. The problem is we're living too long, you know, and that's a good thing. But if you want to live the last half of your life, you know, without hormones, you're probably going to get more brittle, 
Your brain's not going to function as well. You're going to lose muscle, gain fat, your hair, your skin, your vitality. It's all going to go. It's, gonna, it's on the decline. So you almost have to cheat nature in a way and keep the hormones at least even. I like to aim for about a 30-year-old level. And th there's a lot of misunderstanding because of a study that came out about 12 years ago called the Women's Health Initiative as far as female hormones go. In that study, using synthetic hormones from pregnant horse urine, Primrin and Primpro, which before that time were the most two commonly prescribed medicines in America. In that study, using those hormones, eight more women per 10,000 came down with breast cancer. Eight more women per 10,000 came down with heart disease or stroke. Enough to perk your ears up, but that was eight more per 10,000. What they didn't tell you, they were using synthetic horse urine hormones. Also in that study, what they didn't tell you was that half the women in that study were over 65 years old and smoking. There was a lot of obesity going on. So what causes cancer is smoking and obesity. And those two major factors, a lot of other toxicities and things. But um, So with bioidentical hormones, which is what we use, we don't use synthetic hormones. We use bioidentical hormones. That means they're made from plants. They're identical to what you put out before. And there's about 400 studies that show there's less, much less cancer, much less heart disease or stroke. So you're actually protecting yourself. The thing you're fearing from not taking hormones is the thing that's putting you at risk for cancer and heart disease. I mean, that's why women don't have heart attacks before age 50 like men do, you know, unless you're an outlier. But the reason is because your estrogen is very protective against heart disease and also osteoporosis of course when you know women start getting brittle bones they fall they get pneumonia you know major risk factor of being older is falling and it's because they don't have any estrogen or testosterone so and women do need testosterone just like men do um, it's just as essential just a lot less dosage out of all the hormones I use for women a low dose of testosterone just makes them feel like a different person, you know, back to back to when they used to be young and lean and vibrant and, you know, enjoying life. And so it, with men, also being a 65-year-old guy, of course, you get lowered T levels every year. You know, men are, you just have a slow decline in hormones starting about age 40. Women, you know, cycle. They have four hormones that cycle until they go into menopause. So men are simple creatures. We have testosterone to worry about as far as the sex hormones, and it just gradually declines, get the typical symptoms. Um, there's a lot of even misunderstanding about men's health and about, well, you, you approach a man, well, doesn't testosterone cause prostate cancer? No, it prevents prostate cancer. Um, you should read the book by Dr. Morgan Taylor, famous Harvard urologist who's at all our meetings. I know him. Um, and the book Testosterone for Life by Dr. Morgan Taller is a, just a great book to read. If you're afraid of taking testosterone because of your prostate, read the book. You'll, you'll be afraid not to take testosterone, not only because it protects your prostate, but it also protects your brain, your bones, your vitality. It's not just a sex hormone. So um, a lot of misunderstanding about hormones. And people, they just don't know that you need to get your hormones checked. And, and I'm not talking about just estrogen, testosterone, but all the hormones, thyroid, cortisol, and what may be normal. Your doctor may have told you those were normal, but you have every symptom in the book of a low level of that hormone. And here's the thing I'll tell you. You're low. There's such a huge range of normal that you don't want to be normal on a skewed curve anyway. You want to be optimal. The average American on that bell curve is an unhealthy person. They're overweight. They're sick. They have chronic diseases or on medication so it's a skewed curve so I go more by symptoms than I do levels well and, that, and that's the thing like when I when I think back to you know when we were coming up with with these ideas and then we you know we came up with this you know I don't know if you want to call it a slogan or just you know just a message it, it seems like you know hormones are everything and, and that's why you know we we, we, we were thinking like Everybody should check their hormones. And, and, and what do you have to say to that? Because I think when somebody reads that, have you checked your hormones, a lot of people are going to say, well, that's not for me. 
you know, like right. I don't have, you know, ED or I, I'm not tired or I'm not overweight. Or not menopausal. Or... Right. So so why, how does it apply to those people? Because what I'm hearing you say is you need a baseline level of, of your hormones at a when you're at a, a, a range or an age where your hormones are at optimal peaks or at optimal levels. You know, like cause right. speak a little bit to that, because I think that has a huge role in the preventative and protective aspect of hormones. Yeah, right. You want to get your baseline checked at about at least age 40, you know, because that's kind of when they start changing a little bit. And they drop off at different rates, especially with women. You know, they lose their progesterone first, and then they find, well, I'm getting fibrocystic breast or I'm getting uterine fibroids. It's because you're estrogen dominant. You don't have any progesterone to protect your uterus and your breast against too much estrogen. It also causes a lot of other symptoms of being over-estrogenized. Um, so that right balance is very essential. Also, you need testosterone. If you stop building muscle, even as a female, you've got low testosterone. Your vitality, your libido goes. You need to look at all those levels as well as your adrenal levels, your DHEA, your cortisol levels. Um, and you may be insulin resistant is the reason you can't lose weight or at risk for that metabolic syndrome. But so it's important to get a baseline level. And if they say hormones aren't for them where, well, they're, they're just malinformed or misinformed because you want to be the best you can be. And along with proper nutrition, exercise, sleep, stress management, hormones, you know, they're just as important. So you need to start looking at that. The problem is most medical people don't know much at all about hormones. This stuff is not taught in medical school. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had to go do a fellowship in this years ago, and that's where I learned all my information about it. And it's well, just been a I've learned I learn every day about different. Well, things. And, and the other you know, just for the the audience uh, listening and watching, like uh, I remember I remember when you came up with the name performance medicine and. And, you know, a lot of people think it's, it's more along the lines of sports medicine, but the, the truth is that, you know, performance medicine was about a lifestyle. It was about being at your best, you know, your personal best, living a great life, feeling good. You know, I think that's what, you know, Have You Checked Your Hormones is all about. It's about, you know, feeling great, feeling like you, you felt when you were at you're your, your most energetic, you know, and that whole idea behind, you know, energy is life. You know, if you don't have your energy, what do you got? That's, ex that's exactly right. And, you know, the reason I chose. Do you remember, do you remember that, though, when, when you came up with the name Performance Medicine? I'll never, were we in Hilton Head? No, I was actually driving past Bristol Motor was Speedway. Bristol Motor Speedway. And I just started thinking I was going out on my own and going to get my own clinic and specialize. I'd gone back and gotten my boards in sports medicine also. And, of course, I'm a team doctor. I treat a lot of athletes. and But I believe everybody's an athlete. But it was yeah. that moment I passed by that Bristol Motor Speedway that the word performance came to me. And I said, I'm going to name this thing Performance Medicine, which nobody knew exactly what we did. Um, but I want everybody to perform, their body to perform at its best. I love it. And so they age well. Um, on a truck? No, no. I just saw the Bristol Motor Speedway, and I started I thinking about it and just popped in my head, and I went with it. But um, Because I was at that point geared a lot towards sports medicine. And then as you age, you want to remain an athlete yourself and for all your patients and so a lot of it does have to do with knowing how to work out sure but you can't be your optimal unless your hormones are balanced unless you're eating the right thing you're wasting your time so sure. it's just been a great thing for the last what, 15 16 years that we've done this and it's really grown a lot and we've learned so much we've got thousands and thousands of patients several clinics um you know we do a lot of podcasting uh I wrote my book, the you know Total Health book, and with a lot of recommendations on what you should do and how you should live your life health-wise. Screening tests you should get, screening tests you need to ignore. You know, there's a lot of confusion with medicine nowadays. And well, we're going to need to. We're, that's going to be another behind the scenes because I want to hear more about that. And we're going to we're going to wrap up here just one second, guys. Before we wrap up, have you checked your hormones? Tell everybody the hormones that you're talking about for males and females, just in you know, in one concise sentence so they can go get those checked? Well, as far as males go, you know, you just need um, a testosterone 
level. It depends on the age, you know. Okay. And when they're young with low T, I, I work it up a little bit differently than if you're 65 years old. So um, there's a lot of complexities to it that, you know, go kind of deep that don't understand. But for females um, that are premenopausal, I like a, an FSH, LH, estradiol, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA. I really recommend that most people that come into my office get this thing called a Cleveland heart panel yep. with the hormones because it tells me so much about your inflammatory markers, your insulin resistant, the size of your cholesterol particles, your vitamin levels, some genetic tests, as well as all your hormones, including your adrenals. So that, and it's for the most part covered by insurance. So it's a really extensive test. Maybe the one of the best things we do, you can certainly come in and get that. Or if you just want to check your T level, you could, or to see if in your, your menopause as a female, you could, but so a lot of it's individualized and depending on the age and maybe what your concerns are, but that's one panel that uh, it's almost a no-brainer if you have insurance. You should check that Cleveland panel out. I send it up to the Cleveland Clinic, clinic who has a great integrated medicine um, clinic in it, and all the specialists are on board with this kind of stuff. So um, we do this every day. Cool. So. Cool. We're, we're aiming to make checking your hormones cool, everybody. So, uh, so, Dr. Rogers, thank you for joining me on Behind the Scenes with Ben, giving us an in-depth look at Behind the Scenes of Performance Medicine. And I'm going to end it with this, guys. Have you checked your hormones?